so hello everyone and welcome back to the channel today we will be learning about the odontogenic keratocyst so this video is uh, about the definition the pathogenesis the clinical diagnosis the clinical signs and symptoms treatment and a little bit about the history of uh, odontogenic keratocyst so let's just begin with its introduction uh, so it is a rare and benign but locally aggressive developmental cyst it most often affects the posterior mandible and most commonly presents in the third decade of life it was initially classified as odontogenic keratocyst by who which was later reclassified as keratocystic odontogenic tumor from 2005 to 2017 and in the year 2017 uh, who re-reverted its name to odontogenic keratocyst as there was lack of evidences for it being a neoplastic lesion so who due to not finding enough evidences which would uh, justify it being classified as a neoplasm or as a benign tumor WHO reclassified it as a cyst and named it as odontogenic keratocyst which it was originally named so coming to the sign and symptoms odontogenic keratocyst can occur at any age and most commonly it will occur in the age from the third decade of life to the sixth decade and the male and female ratio is 2 is to 1 the majority of the lesion is found in mandible with the most of the cases occurring in the angle of the mandible region the cyst do not show any uh, symptoms in the early stage but uh, when it grows and eventually it becomes uh, quite a time that it is growing inside the bone it causes the bony expansion or infection may occur due to which pain may occur so initially it will remain painless but uh, it may become painful due to infection although the bony uh, expansion is uncommon as odontogenic keratocyst grows due to increased epithelial turnover rather than osmotic pressure but uh, in few cases expansion can be seen and when symptoms are present they usually take the form of pain swelling and discharge due to secondary infection it is usually noted as uh, incidental radiographic finding as uh, in early stage there is no pain or anything and even bony expansion is a uh, uncommon thing to uh, to be seen in such cyst radiographically when it is seen it can be seen unilocular or as a multilocular radiolucency and it can also be mistaken as residual cyst or dentitory cyst if they occur over an unerupted tooth so let's come to the pathogenesis it originates from the odontogenic epithelium or the dental lamina in the areolus left from the tooth developmental stage and they are mainly thought to arise from the rest of series there is another genetic aspect of the pathogenesis as well so according to uh, this the sporadic or non syndromic and syndromic okcs are associated with mutations in gene ptch found on chromosome number 9q which is a part of hedgehog signaling pathway now ptch is a tumor suppressor gene and loss of ptch activity leads to break in the cell cycle a third of the okc according to this article shows mutation in ptch resulting in the cyst epithelium undergoing highly proliferative activity this proliferation will lead to growth of the cyst wall the diagnosis is done usually through radiological means but the definitive diagnosis is through biopsy and aspirational biopsy of odontogenic cyst contains greasy fluid which is pale in color and and contains keratotic squams the protein content of the cyst fluid is below 4 g percent and that will be the diagnostic of the odontogenic keratocyst the radiological uh, findings of the odontogenic keratocyst will show well defined radiolucent areas with rounded or scalloped margins which are demarcated very well these areas can be multilocular or unilocular 
the growth pattern of the lesion is characteristic for from which a diagnosis can be made as there is spread of the uh, lesion in the forward and backward direction along the medullary cavity with little expansion or no expansion of the bone and there will be no resorption of the teeth or the uh, resorption of inferior uh, dental canal will not be seen and teeth displacement is also minimalistic because of the spread of the odontogenic keratocyst is in the forward and backward uh, direction causing no expansion this is the reason why uh, the lesions when they are accidentally discovered on radiographs are most of the time very large lesions so this is uh, about the radiological uh, findings of the odontogenic keratocyst histologically as observed under microscope OKC will resemble cretinized squamous epithelium and there will be lack of rete ridges and often have an artifactual separation from the basement membrane. The epithelial lining is thin with even thickness and paracretinized with columnar cells in the basal layer which have focal reverse polarization. The basal cells are an indication of the odontogenic origin as they resemble the pre -amyloblasts. The epithelium can separate from the wall resulting in islands of epithelium and these islands can go on to form satellite or daughter cyst leading to an overall multilocular cyst. In case of an inflamed cyst, hyperplastic epithelium will be seen which is no longer characteristic of OKC and can have resemblance to radicular cyst. So histologically, the OKC will have a thin or 7 to 8 layer thickness of the basement membrane which are columnar cells and uh, there will be reverse polarity of the basal layer. Reverse polarity means that the nuclei are present on the opposite side of the cell or opposite pole of the cell and the retinal edges or the retinal pegs will be absent. There will be presence of satellite cells and the basement membrane will give a tombstone appearance. Now coming to the treatment, the treatment options for uh, OKC may vary according to its size, extent, site and adjacent structures. There are several treatment options. The first one is the surgical enucleation that is the removal of the entire epithelial lining of the cyst. Second option for the treatment is marsupialization which is followed by enucleation in cases where the cyst is large enough. Third option is curettage which involves simple excision and scraping out of cavity. The fourth treatment option is the using of carnois solution along with enucleation of the cyst in which ethanol, chloroform and acetic acid um, are the main component of this carnois solution and it is used along with excision and curettage cavity wall can be treated with fixative either before enucleation to kill the lining of the wall or added after curettage to bony walls killing any residual epithelial cells to a depth of 1 to 2 mm the next treatment option is peripheral ostectomy but at least in which at least 1.5 mm of the bone is uh, removed beyond the cystic margin or the margin of the lesion in order to prevent any recurrence. The next treatment is enucleation followed by cryotherapy. Then another option for treatment is topical application of 5-fluorouracil after enucleation. Finally, in cases of uh, larger cyst, Ostectomy or end block resection can be done. So, ost so ostectomy is removal of peripheral bone. End block resection is removal of the cyst with the surrounding tissue. Extensive cysts may require a bone graft after bone resection and reconstruction of the area. Now, let's discuss about the rate of reoccurrence and the neoplastic nature of OKC. Uh, recurrence is likely uh, when treated by simple enucleation because of the chances that the bits and pieces of the uh, epithelial lining of the cyst may remain which will give recurrence to the cyst again as it is uh, thin and fragile leading to incomplete removal of the lining. The other reason is that due to presence of uh, satellite cells or satellite cyst recurrence can occur 
the rate of recurrence is around 2 to 3 percent and can be as high as 50 percent and it can be seen as early as 5 years and as late as 40 years after the removal of the cyst. The neoplastic nature of the OKC has been a debate since a long time and due to the high recurrence rate, late detection when the cyst has grown very large and causation of tumor suppressor gene inactivation. A few people have classified OKC as benign neoplast but the evidence to suggest that this type of cyst is not a neoplast is that it responds very well to marsupialization. Now in the end let's discuss about the differential diagnosis. Radiologically odontogenic myxoma, amyloblastoma, central giant cell granuloma, adenomatoid odontogenic tumor and dentigerous cyst are the differential diagnosis of OKC and histologically orthokeratosis, radicular cyst and amyloblastoma will resemble OKC. So this was all about odontogenic keratosis. That's a wrap for now. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye till then and take care.